Hello and welcome to First Impression Reviews where we're going to open a figure, unbox it and review it as we're experiencing it for the first time. And today we're doing a bit of an older figure. This is the Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Starscream. This is the first one that transforms into a Tetra Jet and it's a figure that I had originally passed on. This was released around July of 2019, so a little over a year ago as of the time of this recording. It's a Voyager figure that originally retailed for approximately $30. As you can see here, I found this figure just yesterday at Ross for 13 bucks. So for that price, I couldn't pass it up. I picked this one and another figure up for less than the price of one of these figures. Originally, I picked up two. So I was very happy about that. So I figured, what the heck, I passed them the first time. Uh, they're cheap enough now. Let's check them out. And that's what we're going to do here today. So you can see uh, Starscream is displayed in his um, robot mode here in the window box. We've got some artwork of Starscream here on the side. And as I understand it with these siege boxes, there's some black light effect if you shine a black light on here there's some cybertronian writing and then there's something to translate and i don't know what I, I really don't know that's that's about all i know about that siege artwork on the side there and then on the back we've got the product shots showing us starscream in both robot and vehicle mode and how he works along with some of the other um i i keep forgetting what they're called so i'm just gonna call them target masters since that's what they originally were uh battle masters so there you go so how, how he works with some battle masters okay enough about the packaging let's get him opened up and check him out okay so there's nothing in the box left in there here is our insert I don't know if there's any secret messages in that or not. We'll put that back in. We've got our instructions. We'll set those aside. And we've got our figure. And here's Starscream now completely out of the package. The only thing left to do with him here is uh, straighten out the arms. This uh, ray on this arm seems to be loose on mine. That's kind of a shame. But uh, I can see that the arms are compressed. So these are supposed to open up somehow. Yep, there we go. And then we can extend them. So that looks like that's really the only bit of transformation that you have to do or adjusting that you have to do with him out of the box. You can see the difference in the arms there. So we'll go ahead and... Do that on this side as well. Just extend that out. You see what I mean about that no ray? It just falls off on its own. It just seems very loose. Let's try this. Let's try switching them and see if that makes any difference. And I don't know if that's going to be an issue with the arm or with the no ray itself. But there you go. There's Starscream out of the package. He looks pretty good. It's it's really kind of cool how a, a figure that is very obviously going to turn into a Cybertronian mode uh, still looks like the character that we saw in G1, uh, which was something very cool because uh, for those of you that have seen that very first episode of G1, the, the figures or the characters, they had Cybertronian modes, but when they transformed into robots, they looked the exact same way that we were going to see them when they came to Earth and took on Earth mode, so the robot modes didn't seem to change. I love the way they did that here where he still looks like Starscream as we know him, from G1, he looks like he could transform into the F-15, but in fact, he transforms into a Tetra Jet, and that is very, very cool. Uh, he is approximately seven inches tall at the top of the head, eight if you go all the way up here. And just for a couple of comparisons, here he is next to his future self, the one that will transform into the F-15. And you can see the similarities, they just look if you didn't know they transformed into two different things in vehicle modes, it would be very hard to tell, right? That That's just, it's really, really cool. And I just cannot say enough good things about how they figured out a way of doing that. That is really awesome. And then again, one more time, just to have another comparison, there he is with Voyager Prime from Arthur Eyes, so you can see what they look like side by side. So very, 
Very cool. Uh, let's see, air articulation wise. Well, let's come in close. Let's see the head real quick so you can see the molding on the head. Classic Starscream looking head. It's got a little bit of light piping there. You can see the eyes lighting up. That is very, very cool. And just kind of going all the way around on the figure, not very kibbly. And you know what? Let's do this. Let's bring in Earth Starscream for comparison so you can see how they stack up. In fact, the Cybertronian Starscream has a little bit less kibble i would think in the back in terms of backpack goes so that looks very very nice now the wings do appear to be quite a bit bigger but that is understandable uh, as to why that's going to work but when you're looking at them in, in, in just robot mode they don't seem that big they only seem big when you're looking at them from the back and of course they're on hinges so you can kind of play with these and angle them and you know just kind of play around with how they're going to look so that's very very cool and it gives you lots of very cool options articulation wise it looks like the head is on a boy joint. You've got a little bit of up and down and side to side there. Uh, the shoulders could go all the way around. If you move the wings, they can go in and out. Can they? Yeah, they can go in and out. Rotation at the bicep, bend at the elbow. And look at that rotation on the wrist. Very cool. But if you try to turn it, that's going to open. So you have to hold this when you're turning them outwards, I guess. Okay, let's see the waist. Does he have a waist? He does have a waist rotation. Very cool. Actually, I think that's for transformation. Legs can kick forward, back that far. They're going to stop there because of the backpack. And they can go in and out. They rotate at the thigh, bend at the knee. And let's see, the feet can tilt forward and backwards. And they also got a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of ankle tilt. So that's actually pretty cool. That looks really, really nice. Now, I'm wondering, I thought in other pictures that I've seen, I thought this was supposed to be, yeah, this is supposed to be back like that. So that's another adjustment you have to make with him out of the box. Is this has to come out, and that's going to tab in right there. So there you go. So now I have him properly transformed into robot mode. I think I am definitely going to have to tighten up these ports and these guns. You can see they're kind of moving around and wiggling. They seem a little loose. They're not so loose that they're falling off. This one fell off a couple of times, but they don't seem to be falling off now. But they do seem to be loose. So definitely something I'm going to have to deal with there. Okay, let's see if we can get through transformation. So we're going to take these guys off, set them off to the side. And I guess we'll start right here with the arms again and collapse these one more time. So let's see, these are going to collapse. And is the fist going to go in? Yes, it is. That is very cool. I actually kind of, I think I like the way this collapses better than the earth one does. So let's see, we're going to open that up. Collapse it on the double hinge, bring in the fist and close it back up. That is really, really cool. Okay, let's see. The feet, we're going to close these up. And I know that these legs should collapse somehow, right? Do these open up? How do these collapse? Oh, that's very cool. Look at that. So it's springy. Springy action back there. Do I need to collapse these? No, these are going to bend. They're not going to collapse. Okay. Uh, the waist is going to turn. I do know that much. So we need to unplug the backpack. Oh, we're going to unplug the shoulder stacks here and bring them around. Yes. And then these are going to tab in together in the front. And that's going to let us bring the backpack all the way out, which will let us turn the waist around and do something with the head to put it away. So there's a, there's a panel back here, and I think i got to get this panel all the way out. And up and over the back of his head, there's a tab on there. Right? Yeah, so that panel is going to tab in the back of his head. That will allow me to then collapse the head in. And I don't know if it needs to go in all the way. It goes in that far, and then it presents a lot of resistance. So maybe that's as far as it needs to go. Okay, so now these are going to fold up, right? Do the legs tab together? They, doesn't, they don't see, appear to have any, any tabs or pegs or anything like that. Oh, I know the chest needs to come up. This has been a point of contention for this figure, I know, because there's no pin, and when this chest pops up, it tends to pop off the figure. So let's see if it does that to me. Uh, no, it seemed to hold just fine for me. So that's, I guess I'm lucky in, the, in that respect. Uh, however, there is no pin. I, 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 I heard originally that there were reports of this figure being found with a pin where it should be. Uh, but then I think later I heard that that wasn't true and that wasn't actually happening. I've never seen this figure with a pin in there. So, okay. So now these are going to come down, and the arms have two slots here. They're going to peg into these two tabs here. Okay. 
Wow, that is really tight. Okay, there it goes. Now this one. Kind of cool just stumbling my way through these transformations and figuring them out for the first time. So now, what? This chest needs to peg in. There's tabs here and slots here. So that needs to go there like this, I guess. Does the backpack need to come down? I think the backpack needs to come down. You see the chest piece is starting to come off on me now. I think this whole shell needs to come down first, doesn't it? Bring that down. Bring the wings down. Okay, so I see there's more tabs up here, more slots on the arms there. So those are going to tab in there. If I can get it lined up. There we go. Same on this side. Something doesn't seem to be lining up for me. Head all the way in. There it goes. Okay, so now what happens here? This has to come down. That is really tight. That little backpack piece that is super tight. So that's going to come down, tab in there, and I guess the chest will be the last piece that is going to come up and tab into place. So. There it goes. It's going to tab in right in there on the back. Very cool. We did it. We figured it out. And then we got some slots down here. You can, I guess you can put it on the arms like that, or you can put them on the wings like this. So whichever one of those looks best to you, I guess is the way you're going to go. I think I'm going to go with the wings. So I'm just going to put them there since I already have experience that these are loose on the arms and see they're not. They're not loose on the wings. They're actually, they go in there pretty tight and snug. They feel pretty good on the wings. And there it is. There is Starscream now in his Tetra Jet mode. And he looks pretty cool. Here in Tetra Jet mode, Starscream is approximately six inches long, about three and a half inches tall up here to the top of this crest here. And this is really, really cool. I absolutely love the design of this Tetra Jet. I think I got something wrong here. I think these are supposed to be, yep, these are supposed to be under the nose cone like that. Okay, that looks better. Uh, but yeah, that looks really cool. And again, uh, you're going to hear me say G1 a lot because I watched the G1 cartoon when it first came out. And this really just calls back to that G1 cartoon and that first appearance of Starscream when we saw them originally in Tetra Jets. And that just looks really, really cool. Absolutely love the design of this jet, this shell here. Yeah, kind of obvious um, chest piece on the back there. What are you going to do? Uh, the rest of the jet looks amazing. And of course, we've got some kibble on the on the bottom there not a whole lot though it, it's not like there's a, a whole robot hanging out from the bottom of the jet so that actually manages to look pretty good it did a very good job this is a really really cool figure i'm glad i actually went out and picked it up for comparison here is earth mode starscream so you can see what these guys look like together and overall earth mode starscream does seem to be bigger um if i remember correctly i may have to rewind and go check but i think earth mode was taller than uh, um, Siege in uh, robot mode as well. But uh, the jets, the yeah, the, the vehicle modes are definitely, but he's bigger in Earth mode for sure. But yeah, that looks amazing. Very, very cool figure. I am really glad that I got this, uh, that I finally went off to, after this figure and picked it up. Uh, very good deal for 13 bucks. I'm really happy that I got it. And uh, yeah, this is very cool. This is very wishable. You can pick this up and just, just play with it. Uh, feels pretty solid, very good. Love the design, fun transformation, very nice looking robot mode, very nice looking vehicle mode, very, very happy with this figure. And I think that about does it for the Warford Cybertron Siege, uh, let's call him Tetra Jet mode, Starscream. What did you think of this figure? Let me know in the comments down below. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. I got that donate button up there. If you want to hit on that, I certainly would appreciate it. Share with your friends if you like what you see, and I'll talk to you next time.